Hi, I'm Jonah, and this is a Learn to Play tutorial for Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. This month we put together two sweet lullabies for you to learn how to play, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and Hush Little Baby. Many of us grew up hearing these songs you know, as a kids, having our grandparents or our parents or someone in our family singing them to us, and many of us have sung them to our kids as well. And kids just really connect with the native flute, so we thought this was a good combination. And over the years, I've had a lot of opportunities where I was around kids, either a group of kids teaching them how to play, or in a schoolyard, or in a classroom, or even little babies when they're fussing or crying. And I've picked up the native flute and played, and all of a sudden everything, the energy of the whole place just really mellows out. And it really brings a lot of ease to kids. And so we, we hope that this is, one, this is a way that you can help teach your kids and, and teach kids in general that music can bring ease into our lives. It's also a great song because it's so simple as, as the first song to teach your kids or kids in general how to play on the native flute. And it's a perfect way to, to help them on their musical journey. Now, if you haven't learned how to play a song from tablature before, this is also a good song for that because many of us know what it's supposed to sound like in our head. And so when we're taking the melody written on a page and we're turning it into a melody that we hear on the flute, it helps us if we can hear it in our head as we play it on the flute. So it's a good song for that as well. Now I'm going to be playing this on a white tail flute in the key of B, which is one of the lower tones in our high tone flutes. And the high tone flutes for these lullabies, I think have what most of us would think of as kind of a traditional feel for a lullaby. They're really sweet sounding, they have sweet notes to them, but I think you could play this on any native flute and it would sound really cool. Like on a deep bass tone flute, it would have that real tranquil vibe, especially if you're, you're helping a child go to sleep or you really wanna mellow out the energy of a room. I think playing these songs on a really big bass flute or a low tone flute would sound really cool. Now I'm going to go th play through the song once here and then I'll go through a little introduction on how to use these tutorials and then we'll get into the tutorial itself. Now the easiest way that I find to learn songs is to walk through them phrase by phrase. And a phrase is like the sentences that build the song. Essentially, each time you pause to take a breath, you've completed a phrase. In the sheet music, I note the phrases by using these numbers with slashes through them. Phrase one, two, three, and so on. As I walk through each phrase, I'll note anything that's unusual or particularly challenging in that phrase, and then I'll show you how to play it, and I'll play it at a really slow tempo. At that point, I'd suggest pausing the video and working on that phrase until you have the fingerings and the rhythm pretty well down at that slow tempo, and then move on to the next. Once we've moved through the whole song, I'd suggest going back to the beginning and, and working through each phrase again, and slowly each time you do that, bringing it up to tempo. And now I'll walk you through all the phrases. This is the first phrase of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. And if you haven't learned how to play a song from tablature before, this is a great song to start with because it's a really simple song. You likely know the tune, the melody of it, the words of it. So you can hear it in your head as you're playing it. So you really can learn easily from this song. Now the first phrase is Pretty straightforward, we are using quarter notes, so each note gets one beat, and then we move to a half note. And it's the same rhythm throughout all the phrases of the song. Six quarter notes followed by a half note. Six quarter notes followed by a half note. So it's a really simple song in its rhythm. And the fingering here, it might take you a minute to get, but go real slow in the beginning, and then as you memorize the fingerings, you can increase the tempo up to the correct speed. Now 
This is phrase two, and again, the rhythm is the same throughout the whole song. But in this phrase, we're introduced to a note that may be new to some of you, this note here. Now, in order to go from phrase one into phrase two, we're doing what's called cross-fingering. We'll also do some cross-fingering within phrase two, but right off the bat, you're coming off of this note here in phrase one, and then you're going to this note here, the first note of phrase two, and in order to do that, you need to, op you need to open one hole and close two others. So this takes a little dexterity. If you haven't learned to do this before, give yourself some time to learn how to do this on the flute. Now as you move on, we go from this note to this note, and again, that's another cross-fingering. It's not quite as complicated of a cross-fingering because we're just opening one hole and then closing another rather than opening one hole and closing two. But again, give yourself some time with this. And I think it's really worth learning how to do cross fingering is because it's going to open up a lot of other notes on the flute for you to play with. So coming off of phrase one, we're on this note, and then we move into phrase two on this note. So there's a cross fingering there that if I just play the phrase, you won't see. So it goes from here to there. So here's the phrase. So you also have the cross fingering in the phrase of going from there to there. Phrases three and four are exactly the same, so I'm going to combine them here and talk about them as one. In these phrases, we have the same cross fingering here. So going from here to here, and then going from here to here. So if, in order to play this song, you're really going to have to learn the dexterity of that cross fingering. But I think it's really worth it because in your everyday playing, when you're just improvising or when you're going to learn other songs, this is going to become a common thing. And in your everyday playing, it really adds a lot more creativity and of notes that you can use to express yourself. So because phrases three and four are the same, we'll do them together. Again, the cross fingering. Phrase five is an exact replica of phrase one. So the work you put into learning that phrase will pay off here and make it easier to learn this phrase as well. And here we are at phrase six. And just like phrase five is an exact replica of phrase one, phrase six is an exact replica of phrase two. So phrases one and two are repeated here in phrases five and six. And this is a very common song structure in its simplest form. It's the ABA format where A is, in this case, phrases one and two, and then B, phrases three and four, is some other thing, and then a is repeated again, and here we see that in phrases five and six. And within that song structure, it feels like a song. When we, when we follow that structure, we create what feels like a song. In your own playing, you play a little melody, you play something else, and then you play that little melody again. A, B, A. And this is a great way to create the feeling of a song within your own improvisational playing. So here in, phrases, in phrase six, we again see the cross fingering coming out of phrase five from here to here. And then again, we see it within phrase six from here to here.
hopefully after working through this, the phrases here in this song, that cross fingering will be a little easier and this phrase will come uh, quicker than some of the others. And then a variation on that that you uh, can play as you end the song is this fingering. So you change the note the before the second the second to last note. <laughs> 